today. It's Nintendo's indie world, we just live in it. This is Checkpoint. Welcome to Checkpoint, where this week we are super excited for the Game Awards. Don't lie to the people, Graham. We're not excited. I'm, I'm, I'm a bit excited. What studio will win the Fresh Indie Game Award presented by Subway Eat Fresh? Who will win Content Creator of the Year and then probably do something horribly offensive and make us all want to pretend we don't know them? Just going to be safe and continue not knowing any Content Creator nominees. Also, I hear they're going to secretly release a thousand angry geese in the theater in honor of Untitled Goose Game, so that's something to look forward to. I'm pretty sure that's not true. But what if it is? Do you want to miss that? Chooseco is the real name of a real company, and that company owns the trademark to Choose Your Own Adventure. And they're issuing letters, legal letters, to indie games. You see, the games being served are using the term Choose Your Own Adventure as a genre tag, and Chooseco is shrugging its shoulders and claiming its hands are tied, all in the name of defending its trademarks. Which I get. Kinda. Choose Your Own Adventure is a well-known trademark with a lot of modern value, and it wouldn't make sense to let indie devs run roughshod over such classic works of literature as War with the Evil Power Master, Spy for George Washington, and You Are a Shark. It could be argued that since Choose Your Own Adventure is not part of any actual title here and is only a genre tag, that this is Kind of a pointless activity, but trademark law is trademark law, so instead, let's just figure out a new way to describe this genre. Ah, decide your own journey. Designate your own experience. Single out your own peril. Ooh, co-opt your own undertaking. Uh, here we go. Commit oneself to personal jeopardy. Big changes in the latest patch for the Elder Scrolls Blades, adding a PvP arena and guilds, but most importantly, removing the timer to open chests. You may recall that Blades was utterly lambasted on its release, not just for failing to deliver on Bethesda's promise of, quote, a true Elder Scrolls experience on mobile, but for how it handled loot. You'd find chests of differing qualities, but to open them and, and get the loot inside, you'd have to wait. Sometimes for a while, because it's a mobile game and time gating your participation is how they get you with the microtransactions. See, you could use gems, the game's premium currency, to make chests open faster and not waste your damn time. So why remove chest timers now when it was the number one complaint on launch, especially when the game was still pulling in tens of thousands of dollars a day? Well, they are porting the game to Switch in early 2020, and the first time a home console player encounters a chess timer, they're going to immediately uninstall the game. But now that timers are gone, Switch and mobile players alike can soon experience the fun of PvP combat by going like this. We got a slew of big announcements out of Nintendo on Tuesday with their Indie World presentation. Here's a roundup of the ones for which I could write jokes. Axiom Verge 2 improves upon the original by adding more colors to its palette, which makes it more appealing to me because I am a literal five-year-old child. Sports Story takes golf to its natural conclusion by seeking the Earth sports singularity. Didn't see any kabaddi, though. Skatebird. There's a missed opportunity if they don't let you play as Tony Hawk. And Gleamlight, a game where you play as the sword, which I guess means you don't play as a character who carries the sword? Then what's the control scheme? Press X to rust? Super Mash. Oddly, it's not based on the beloved British potato-based superhero. Murder by Numbers is Phoenix Wright meets Mario's Picross by the developers of Hatiful Boyfriend. Nothing snarky to say, just surprised no one's managed to zero in on my wife's gaming tastes until now. Footnote, after she's done, then I get to play it. The Survivalists. Another crafting and survival game that'll probably end up critically acclaimed, which I bet I won't play because it's not lost in blue. Oddworld Stranger's Wrath proves you can make any platformer better by turning it into a first-person shooter. Sailforth proves you can make any online MMO like Sea of Thieves better by removing the online part. And Bacon Switch proves Overcooked could have used more punching. In-game, anyway. And Dauntless was announced for the Switch with crossplay enabled. Hang on, does this even count as an indie? Does anything? 
Nintendo also announced a game called Boyfriend Dungeon, which I missed out on because I was in the kitchen getting some cereal, so let me just uh, Google it and form my hot take. Ooh, uh, this is definitely not a video game. Oh wait, I see a joystick. That's not a joystick. Okay. Uh, I'm going to be more specific. Boyfriend Dungeon Switch. Oh yeah, that's definitely more specific. Okay. Uh, how about um, Boyfriend Dungeon Switch role playing? Oh, huh. That's not... Oh, oh, that, uh, that poor pile of leather. Oh, no, there's a person in there. Okay, I see him though. Okay, Graham, you're just going to have to go on to the next story. I got a little more research to do. If you already bought the $10 Prestige League of Legends skins designed by Louis Vuitton and thought to yourself, that was cool, but I still have way too much money, then good news because the other shoe has dropped in the Riot Games Louis Vuitton partnership, the other hideous shoe. The Louis Vuitton League of Legends capsule collection is now available for pre-order, but you won't. And I won't. Nobody we know personally will buy these because they're not remotely intended for us. Check out this look, for example. To get this whole outfit, because let's be honest, you have to get the whole outfit since any single item would clash with even the most fashion-forward wardrobe, that coat costs $4,450. Just the crop top is $1,070. The cycle shorts are $940 alone. Plus, if you need a bag that will just barely hold a Nintendo Switch, the mini backpack goes for $2,310. But you're a busy person, and that's probably too much storage for you anyway, since all you really need to carry around is half a muffin from breakfast. So why not save some money and get this bag for $730? Look, it's easy to dunk on these. Especially these sneakers that I definitely thought had been photographed at a weird angle, but no, that's just what they look like. But Louis Vuitton doesn't care. These aren't for us. These are for affluent Koreans or esports pros with more money than taste. Someone is going to buy these, and they'll probably look awesome in them. But we'll never know because the camouflage is just too good. So, are you actually going to watch the Game Awards? Oh no, I'm I'm building Lego. At the Game Awards? Is, it, is that something I can do? Uh, maybe if Lego sponsors it. Yes, the Stacks on Stacks Award for Most Profitable Game presented by LEGO Watch Your Step. Coming up, Fortnite content creator Ninja appeared on Bon Appetit's Back to Back Chef series where, despite claiming to have worked as a restaurant chef for three years, he seemed unaware of how to slice bread? I guess you don't need to make your own food when you've got that mixer money. Today, it's... oh wait. It's super late. Sometimes it's it'd be like that. So, they, they don't it think do, it'd be, do, but do, it do. do, do, do what? But it do, 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 do. <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually just lifting stuff wholesale so, from something awful now. So, so mad. I know, right? <sighs> oh... God. 